Okay, now that we've got a replacement, let's put the original foot back on the table. <laughs> I did not add that sound effect. And now, let's see if the replacement fits. Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV 3D channel, we'll design and print a replacement foot for a folding table. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian, and you are watching BV 3D. This episode of the BV 3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Becoming a member is a great way to support the channel and has a few perks besides just getting your name in lights here. Click the join button to find out more. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to design and print a replacement foot for a folding table. When I set up my gift wrapping station this year, I noticed that one of the feet was missing from my folding table. Which was kind of odd, really, because quite honestly, that table has been sitting in the dining room for a solid year with two 3D printers on it, and I don't remember it missing a foot the last time I set it up. But the fact remained that the table only had three feet, and so I knew I needed to remedy that situation. And how do you do that when you have a bunch of 3D printers? Why, you order a replacement from Amazon, of course. <laughs> no. What you do is you remove one of the three remaining feet from the table and take a few measurements from it. Then you spend a couple of minutes in some CAD software to design a replacement, and then you slice and print that replacement. And then you hope your measurements were correct as you attempt to install the replacement foot. And I'll show you how to do all that, so stick around. So first things first, let's take measurements of an original table foot. This one is 31 and a half millimeters in diameter at the bottom, and the overall height is 36 millimeters. The inside diameter is about 25 and a half millimeters, and the depth of that hole is 29 millimeters. Now we know the critical measurements necessary to design a replacement part. And armed with those measurements, we can get into Tinkercad on the computer to do some modeling. If you're unfamiliar with Tinkercad, it's a free CAD application that runs in your web browser. Tinkercad works differently from traditional CAD software, and I think it's more approachable. Within a few minutes of using it, you'll have a basic understanding of how it works. The concept is that you start with basic shapes. You can adjust the size and position of them and group them together to make more complex shapes. There are parts that are considered solid and parts that are considered holes. When you group a whole part with a solid part, the whole part gets cut out of the solid. Okay, so the basic shape for this table foot is a cylinder. But I'm going to start with the hole that needs to be removed from the foot, and this is also a cylinder. Its height will be the same as the depth of the hole in the original part, 29 millimeters. And its diameter will be the same as the inside diameter of the original part, 25 and a half millimeters. Now I'll move that off to the side and start on the rest of the foot. While I'm mostly making this a cylinder, I do want to taper the bottom of it a little bit. To do that, I'll use a half sphere. I'll use a cube-shaped hole part to remove the top part of the sphere. Positioning the hole part above the half sphere and grouping them together accomplishes that. Now I have a round, tapered part, but it's upside down, so I need to flip it 180 degrees. And then I need to adjust its size. Do I set it to 25 and a half millimeters like the cylinder I made earlier? Actually, no. That cylinder is a hole that's going to be cut out of the part so that it'll fit on the table leg. I want the finished foot to be as wide as the original one, so I'll set it to 31 and a half millimeters wide. Notice how the parts I bring out onto the work plane automatically sit with their bottoms at the same level as the work plane? Well, I'm going to use an advanced trick to get the bottom of this next part to sit with its bottom at the same level as the top of the round part we just made. The trick is that we can temporarily set the work plane somewhere other than its usual position. In this case, I'm setting the work plane to the same level as the top surface of the round part. Now, when I drag out a solid cylinder, its bottom is right on top of the round part. And I can set the cylinder's diameter to match the round part at 31 and a half millimeters and I'll reset the work plane by setting it back to its usual position. 
One thing I can do with a cylinder in Tinkercad is adjust how many sides it has. The standard number of sides is 20, but it can be as high as 64 for a smoother appearance. You'll notice that about a lot of Tinkercad's objects. They're close approximations. So a cylinder isn't a true cylinder, it's a bunch of flat faces in a roughly cylindrical shape. I think they do this to reduce the amount of computing power needed to make designs in Tinkercad. Anyway, now I want to line up the cylinder and the round base, so I'll draw a selection box around them and use the Align tool. There's an icon for it, but I used the L key as a shortcut. For each axis, there's a set of alignment dots. I want to align these on their centers on the X and Y axes, so I'll click the center dots. Then I'll select the two objects again and use the group command. And again, there's an icon for it, but I'm using the shortcut key G. And so with those grouped together, I'm going to set the overall height of it to match the original part at 36 millimeters. The last step in the design is to cut the hole out of the foot so it can be installed on the table leg. I'll select both parts, align the tops together, and then center them on the X and Y axes. Then, by grouping the hole with the solid, the hole is cut out of the solid and we're left with a 3D model of a replacement foot for the folding table. This I'll export as an STL file so it can be sliced and printed. I'm going to be printing this using TPU, which is a soft, flexible filament, and I'll print it on a King Rune KP3 Pro S1 that Sliceworks sent over for review. This printer uses a direct drive extruder with a gear reduction drive, so it'll have an easy time of printing with this soft filament. So now I'll drag that STL file into Prusa Slicer, and there it is, right in the middle of the build plate. Now I need to pick a TPU filament preset. There we go. This is one that I tweaked a while back for Soval's yellow TPU filament. You can use the generic TPU filament preset if you don't have a customized one. So I'll slice that and then save it to the flash drive for the printer and then I can get that printed. Here's some footage of the printer happily cruising along, cranking out that TPU filament like a champ. And here's the finished product. It looks very similar to the original part, although you can tell I was designing for functionality over aesthetics. But the real test is whether this replacement part actually fits on the folding table. So let's go find out. Okay, now that we've got a replacement, let's put the original foot back on the table. <laughs> I did not add that sound effect. And now, let's see if the replacement fits. And there it is, everyone! It fits! Awesome! 3D printing and 3D modeling save the day and prevent that table from scratching my hard surface floors. I still think 3D printers are amazing pieces of technology, and I wanted to show that 3D printing does have uses beyond making cool display models. I hope this video has given you some ideas. Maybe you've got a table or a chair with a missing foot, so you can design and print a replacement like I did. Or maybe you have an appliance that's missing a handle or a knob. You can design a simple replacement using the same methods used in this video. If you make a replacement part for something, comment and let me know what you made. I'd love to hear about it. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And then especially a big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.